Okay, so we're going to have a look at an interesting trigonometric function called CAS, and this is shorthand for cosine and sine. And we literally just define CAS x to be cos x plus sine x. And I believe this first appeared in an old paper on Fourier analysis as a shorthand, but never really seems to have caught on, I guess just because the expanded form isn't actually that much more complicated than the abbreviated form. But still, there are some nice interesting properties that we'll have a look at of CAS. So we'll start off by differentiating CAS. Let's see what the derivative is. So if we differentiate cas x, what do we get? Well, we differentiate cos x, this gives us minus sin x. Then we differentiate sin x, this gives us plus a cos x. So this isn't very nice at the moment. Let's see if we can express this maybe in terms of cas. Well, we know that minus sin x, this is the same as sine of minus x. And because we've got the minus x in here, why don't we change this x here? So cos x is equivalent to cos minus x by symmetry. Then this is nice because now we've got cos minus x plus sine minus x, so this is actually just cas minus x. So this is nice, we're off to a good start here. The derivative of cas x is just cas of minus x. So the next property we'll have a look at is trying to write cas x as a single cosine function or as a single sine function. And basically this is possible due to the harmonic addition theorem. So because we've got the same argument here, x in cos as we have in sine, we can write any linear combination of these two as a single sine or cosine function. So we'll start off, let me just write cas x as 1 times cos x plus 1 times sin x. And then the end goal, what we're looking to do is write this as r times sin x plus alpha, where we need to find the value of r and the value of alpha. So we'll do some expanding and comparing coefficients. So if we expand sin x plus alpha using the angle sum formula, we'll get sin alpha cos x plus cos alpha sin x. Then what we can do is we can compare coefficients here. We know that 1 has got to be equal to r sin alpha, and here this 1 has got to be equal to r cos alpha. Well, what's really interesting about this is r sin alpha is equal to r cos alpha, so this tells us that sin alpha is equal to cos alpha, because r isn't going to be equal to 0 here. Okay, And one solution of this is that alpha is equal to pi over 4. It's not necessarily unique because there's actually infinitely many. You could add multiples of pi to this and it would still work. But this is the alpha we'll go with and this will give us a representation of cas as a single sine function. Okay, so we know that alpha is equal to pi over 4. So now we need to try and find the value of r. So we've got r sine pi over 4 cos x plus cos pi over 4 sine x. Then we know that sine pi over 4 and cos pi over 4, both of these are just equal to root 2 over 2. So this tells us that r times root 2 over 2 has got to be equal to 1, which is nice because then this just gives us immediately our value of r we can see is just going to be root 2. Okay, so if we put this back into our original form then, we found the value of alpha, we found a value of r, so we get root 2 times sine x plus pi over 4 as a nice way of writing cas here. But then we can also write this as a single cosine function using the property that sine, let's say y, for any value y, this is just the same as cosine shifted along pi over 2 units. So this is the same as cosine of pi y minus pi over 2. So if we take away pi over 2 from sine x plus pi over 4, what do we get? We have root 2 cos x minus pi over 4. So here we've got two nice different representations, one as a single sine function and one as a single cosine function for our cas function. So now for our final nice property of cas, what we're going to do is prove a really satisfying angle sum formula for cas. And the end goal here is that we're actually going to try and express cas of a plus b entirely in terms of cas, so with no reference to cos or sine. So let's dive in. Cos of a plus b we know is cos a cos b minus sine a, sine b. We can do the same sort of thing for sine a plus b. We know this is sine a cos b plus cos a sine b. And at this point, we can do a little bit of factorising. So we've got here a cos a cos b, and we've got plus sine a cos b. And this is particularly nice now, because if we take out this factor of cos b, what have we got? We've got cos a plus sine a into cos b. So here this is a cas a, this is really nice. 
And then we can do something similar here as well with our minus sine a sine b and our plus cos a sine b. We can take out a factor of sine b, and this gives us a cos a, but now it's minus sine a multiplied by sine b. Okay, but what can we do with cos a minus sine a? Well, remember from before we had minus sine a, this is the same as plus sine of minus a, and here cos a by symmetry is the same as cos minus a. So actually cos a minus sine a is just cas of minus a in disguise. Okay, so let's summarize what we've shown here. We've got cos a plus sine a is cas a, so this is really now a test of my handwriting, is my cas distinguishable from my cos? So cas a cos b, then we've got plus cas minus a multiplied by sine b. Now throughout this proof, there's a little trick that we're going to use over and over, which is to write something like, for example, cos b, we can write this as cos b plus sine b minus sine b. So here we get cas b minus sine b, and it turns out this is going to be quite useful because then we can get some terms which are entirely written in terms of cas, and we have a slightly different leftover term at the end. So let's see what this does for us with our line here. We've got cas a, then this goes into cas b minus sine b, then we've still got this leftover cas minus a sine b term that we'll deal with later. Okay, so if we expand the brackets now, you've got cas a, cas b, then we've got minus cas a, sine b, then we've still got our leftover term at the end. And what we'll actually do now is, because we've already got a term cas a, cas b, here we don't want to end up getting into a loop and sort of stuck around going around forever with a's and b's, but we can write this minus cas a sine b as this is equal to plus cas a sine minus b. It turns out this is going to be a useful way of doing this, otherwise we'll get stuck going around in circles. So we end up with now cas a cas b, a nice term just in terms of cas, then we've got plus cas a sine minus b, but we'll apply the same sort of trick here to sine minus b, so plus a cos minus b and take away a cos minus b, and we've still got our leftover plus cas minus a sine b term. And what we can do here is we've now got sine minus b plus cos minus b, so we can write this as cas minus b, and this gives us in the end, there's still quite a lot more work to be done, but we've got two terms now which are entirely written in terms of cas. We've got cas a cas b plus cas a cas minus b, and we get minus cas a cos minus b, and plus cas minus a sine b. So now we've managed to get a few terms entirely in terms of cas, but we've still got this cas a cos minus b term and this cas minus a sine b term to deal with. So if we look at cas a cos minus b, we've already got a term with a and minus b, and all we can really do with this is turn cos minus b into cos b, which would give us an a and b term, which again we've already got. So what I'm actually going to do is just leave this for now, we'll come back to it later, but let's deal with this final term which has got a minus a and a b in it, which we haven't covered. So the reason I'm choosing this piece now is so that we can get a new type of cas only term. So we'll end up with cas minus a multiplied by sine b. Using our same trick as before, we can write this as cas minus a into sine b plus cos b, so we get cas b minus cos b. So then we are left with cas minus a multiplied by cas b, then minus cas minus a cos b. And what's nice about this here is we've got a minus a and a cos b, so what we could actually do here is we can turn our cos b just into a cos minus b using symmetry of the cosine function. Then we'll get a fresh class term with minus a and minus b, and we can see where we go from there. But basically this minus cas minus a cos minus b term, this will turn into cas minus a into, then it's cos minus b plus sine minus b, minus sine minus b. Okay, so our final expression then for cas minus a times sine b is cas minus a cas b. Then we've got minus cas minus a multiplied by cas 
minus b. So now we've covered all four of our combinations of plus or minus b's. And finally, we end up with minus minus, so plus cas minus a sine minus b. So what we'll do now is we'll substitute this expression in place of cas minus a sine b, and we'll see what we can do with the remaining terms. So now we'll deal with these two terms in the red boxes that aren't entirely expressed in terms of cas. This is actually my favourite part of this proof. I think this is a really satisfying part. Because if you look at, we know that cas a plus b is equal to cas a cos b plus cas minus a sine b. These two terms, and we add them together, don't look too dissimilar from this. And what you'd need to do is, when you experiment with trying changing your cos minus b into a cos b, change your sine minus b into a minus sine b, and that sort of thing, what we get in the end is minus cas a multiplied by cos minus b plus cas a minus a sine minus b. These terms, we can write them as minus cas a cos b, just using the fact that cos is symmetrical. Then we get a minus cas minus a sine b term. And just to make this really clear how this is connected to the piece we already had, if I put this in brackets, turn this into a plus symbol now, we've got cas a cos b plus cas minus a sine b. So we know actually that all of this piece is just equal to minus cas of a plus b. So this is how we managed to write these two remaining terms entirely in terms of cas. And this is really nice now because we know that cas a plus b is equal to the sum of all six of these terms so we know that cas a plus b is equal to all of these nice terms expressed in terms of cas minus a cas a plus b. So when we add cas a plus b to both sides, we end up with cas a plus b. This is now equal to our cas a cas b term plus cas a cas minus b. So there's a really nice symmetry about this as well. Plus cas minus a cas b and minus our term with the two negatives, cas minus a, cas minus b. So if we want an expression just for cas a plus b, all we need to do now is divide both these sides by 2. And we see that cas a plus b, this is just a half times cas a, cas b, plus cas a, cas minus b, plus cas minus a, cas b, minus cas minus a, cas minus b.